Okay, it looks like everybody's here, pretty much. Maybe a couple of stragglers later. I'm Ruth Chandler. It's so great to have you here. And this is Liz Kettle, my partner in crime. <laughs> we do have a website together, and that is your postcard, Textile Evolution. We do do a book study on two of the books, and we will be having other things up. We would love you to go be part of our book study, and please put comments, because we wonder sometimes if people even read it. <laughs> so anyway, go there and find us. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, let's see. Yes. What you have here is a piece I put together with batting, and I zigzag the edges for you just so you've got something to start with. And then the other piece is for your backing once you're done. I don't usually hand stitch through a finished quilt because the quilt police like to look at the back. <laughs> so if it's a piece bigger than this, you may have to go in and put some stitches in to hold it because you don't want a piece to not be attached to the back. Now something like this is pretty small. You may choose to put it in another, put borders around it or something. If you do that, then you might want to go back in and put a few stitches through so that you get a, uh, so it's connected there. So this is Daniela from Valdani and they're the, they have given you all these threads to use. So we want to thank them. They are in booth 2459. So you can go check them out. They have wonderful silks. So after we get started, you can change and move on to a silk if you would like. And they also have these wonderful silks here. So I, I encourage you once we get started to change your threads around. I do also have some from Krynek and from Trinway silks and from Tentacula. And they're all mixed in here. So what we're going to do is start with a basic straight stitch. And does everybody know how to do a basic straight stitch? Pretty much? No? Okay. <laughs> well, let's start with a knot. <laughs> so what you're going to do, your thread is comfortable like this. If you get, and the reason I don't say a certain amount is because people's arms are different lengths. If you have to pull your arm up way like this, you're going to get, first of all, tired, and second of all, knots. So I, a lot of people say 18 inches. I'm more at 24 because I have really long arms. I also work on top of the fabric as much as I can to avoid the up and down, and because that's that cuts down half of your motion. So what you want to do is thread your needle, and I gave you big eye needles. <laughs> um, if I can't thread a needle within two tries, I go to a bigger needle because I'm impatient. <laughs> so what I want you to do is wrap the thread around your finger and hold it with your thumb. Put the needle through the loop and pull, and then hang on to that tail as you pull, and you're going to get a nice knot that's not all wadded up. Do that again. Okay. And this I may have to do really quick. And actually, we have a little video of this on our website. So you wrap it and then you run the needle through the thread. Okay, like that. And hang on to that tail. And keep pulling. Keep pulling. Keep pulling. Hang on to the tail and keep pulling. Okay. Keep pulling. And there you go. You've got a nice little knot. Okay, okay. so there's my knot. Yeah. Do what? So you run it through like this, keep it on your hand, run it through like that, and then pull it through. Oh, after I already have it threaded. Yeah, you have to thread it first. One of the reasons I love these Valdani pearl cottons are because of their variegations. The variegations are, they're a smooth transition instead of the, you know, the old ones had choppy. And so you get this beautiful blended piece. And I just can't say enough about how beautiful the variegation on them are. So what we're going to do, 
And one of the things that uh, people ask me is, what's the difference between embroidery and what you're doing with hand stitching? And I tell them the rules. <laughs> with embroidery, I grew up in Japan, started stitching when I was four. I was taught all the rules and I had to take it out if it wasn't straight and if it wasn't perfect. And I spent a lot of time taking it out, but I learned how to stitch beautifully. And especially in Japan, the hand stitching is just impeccable. But it was very stressful, you know, and you end up like this, doing your stitching. <laughs> so I wanted something more organic, and especially with the work we were doing with the fabric embellishing and stuff, it just, it was too rigid. And so I started practicing not using any rules. And by rules, I mean the stitches had to be the same width and length and size and the same distance apart, and they just had to be perfect. So I stopped that. Now, to unlearn that is kind of difficult. And one of the hardest things to do, there's a seat right here, is um, not fall back into that. And we start, even with our organic shapes, we fall back into that. And if that's what you want, that's great. But it is going to be a learning curve to not be perfect. Because we look at that and we want to see it in a line like that. But when you see the finished product of something that doesn't have all of those rigid stitching in it, then you think, oh, wow, that's really cool. Like this one has, and you'll have to come up and look at it. It's got all kinds of stitching in it. And I did not take anything out. Once it was on there, it was like glued on. I'm not going to take it out. Um, this one that Liz did, believe it or not, this is all done. Straight stitch. Straight stitch. Nothing else. So one of the things that I have in the book, and this is a, uh, the book will be out in February, and it's somewhere out here. You can pass it around, is this little sampler. And the instructions are in the book. This is all done on um, the Rocklawn Osnaberg because it's so simple to, te to stitch through, it's easy, it's a loose weave, and it's neutral. You can do anything with it. So each of these stitches, there's 18 stitches in the book, and each of them go in this little square and this or section and the other side, and they're marked with printed ribbons so you know what they are. So at the very end, you not only have a great sampler, you've got a really cool brag book. <laughs> so what you start with is this, which is very simple to do. It's the width of the Osnaberg divided up like this. So you work on a piece like this, it's easier to work with because if you're working with little pieces like this hand stitching, it's very difficult. You can kind of do, start doing this. So this gives you a little bit more to hang on to. And then you put the, um, couching on it, fold it in half, put the couching on it, a button for, you know, and then you just fold it up. And the, all that's in there is the cotton batting. I used to use a batting called Thermor because it didn't beard, but it feels icky. <laughs> it's a synthetic and it just doesn't feel good. It kind of scratchy and especially in the summertime, it kind of feels hot <laughs> and it just doesn't feel good. So I, I did go back to the, um, cotton batting, but I used the really thin cotton batting. And um, if it starts to beard, I go to a different size needle. Sometimes if you go bigger or smaller, it'll change that. All right. Any more questions before we get started? I use a thimble. If you don't want to use a thimble, don't. Liz doesn't. Um, my thimble's very valuable to me. In fact, my husband lost my thimble last week. I was in the car and I told him to bring it in and actually he threw it in the trash. When he was empty in the trash, it fell out on the gar garage floor and went ding, 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 ding. <laughs> and this isn't just any thimble, this is a silver thimble and it's expensive. And it fits my finger, it has an open, so it doesn't make my finger sweat and hurt. You know, sometimes my fingers especially my cuticles get really sore because I do a lot of hand stitching. So 
It may take you a while to find the thimble that works for you. I think once you find a thimble that works for you, you'll like a thimble. If you don't find it comfortable for you, you're gonna not use it. One of the reasons I like this, to use a thimble is because I use the thicker threads, especially as the, um, the pearl cottons get um, heavier, they're going to be more difficult to pull through. Now, on the Osterberg, it'll be fine, but on your little bits of the oriental fabric there, it might be more difficult to pull through. And then there's also those little grabbers. So use those too. All right, straight stitch. Come up from underneath, wherever you want to start. Come up from underneath. Keep your needle on top of the fabric from now on. And it might be best to show them huh? instead of drawing. So I've started with a little bit of rice, what we call ricing here. So I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to go to a blank piece because it's easier for you to see it that way. It is like a sashiko stitch. It is also um, sometimes called seeding. But a straight stitch is like this. You go in, and this is what I mean by staying on top, in and out and in and out. And then you can load them on your thread, on your needle. So that's what a straight stitch is. Now, if you do ricing or seeding, you just do one stitch, one direction. And this is where being organic and not going all those same direction and length and comes in. Stay on top of the fabric and you just go from one direction to another. See? Mm -hmm. And this is a great fill-in stitch, especially for backgrounds. From one direction to another. Oh, I see what you're saying. See, stay on top. And you just fill it in. Isn't that great? Okay. All right. Here's what I mean by staying on top. I want to watch, have you watch this motion for one stitch. That's one motion for a stitch. Okay. If you don't stay on top, this is your motion. Oh, okay. right. yeah. Takes too much time. Well, it's, it actually makes your motions four more times. Now, is the concept to cross through the fabric Do onto the you whatever you want. Yeah. Um, this one I started and I, I was going to finish some and then I thought if I do that you're going to try and copy it and I don't want you to do that. So see how this goes? It's almost like you can start somewhere and give it a shadow effect almost. So or you'll just go, you just kind of pierce it uh -huh. in any direction? Yes. The needles you're using are chenilles. I like them because they do have a sharp point, but the eyes are big. Uh, my favorite are Clover's Gold Eye because I have old eyes and I can see the gold. But somehow, just having the gold separate from the silver kind of gives you a little extra. Once again, I get impatient and I'm lazy. If I can't get the thread through the needle quickly, within you know two, maybe three tries, I go to a bigger needle. There is also one other kind of a rule of thumb. Um, the end of the, the eye part of the needle shouldn't be much bigger than the doubled thread. Now, if it's smaller, it's going to be difficult to pull your thread through because you are making a hole in your fabric. But if it's too big, then it's going to make a hole and your thread's not, it's just going to be, and you're going to see the hole. So you, it's kind of a fine line there, but if you want something that looks like it's got a hole in it, then by all means go to a bigger needle. Looks like everybody's comfortable with it. All right, we're going to change and go to the cross stitch. Two ways to do the cross stitch. If you're going to do it in a row, You can come in and out like this, and then go back and do like, you know, this. I don't have a tendency to do anything in rows, <laughs> but you know how to do it if you want to. 
So once again, stay on top of the fabric. We can switch up our threads. You can switch your threads if you want. I'm not going to because of time. And you, you take the stitch just like you were going to take the straight stitch, but you go halfway in between and make an X. It's really simple to do. See? Okay. Okay. And once again, these are random, just like your racing stitches. You're just crossing over the stitch. So you make your first stitch, and then you come over here. So let me start again. Here's where I want my stitch. And you notice I'm not worried about how far over there it is. And you make your cross stitch. Now, I'm also not worried whether or not each side of the cross stitch is even. So you can make them wonky, which I like that word because it kind of says a lot. <laughs> And see how that, the variation there, the variegation in that thread is doing so well? All right, does, does everybody have a, a thinner thread? I'm going to show you, and we may not have time but later, but Valdani has these great threads that are 35 weight. And these are sewing machine threads. I mean, you know, you can use them on the sewing machine. And they're terrific um, variegations, but I want to show you what I mean by layering and giving yourself texture. I'm going to change the weight of my thread. And sometimes I change my needle and sometimes I don't. Just depends on what kind of mood I'm in. I like to try and thread a needle without my glasses because <laughs> then I have to drag them out. Now remember when you get, go to a thinner thread, a lighter weight thread, you're going to have to have a bigger knot. So I'm going to show you what I mean by coming back over the top with a different weight. Now see what you're getting in depth and texture there? Uh-huh. So just cross over some and fielding in and... Yeah, you don't... This is where you have the no rhyme or reason. Doesn't matter if you cross over or not. See? Okay. You start filling it in okay. and you're going to get a really fun texture and depth. Mm -hmm. Okay? Oh, okay. The small balls um, of thread that you got from Valdani, those are for you to take home. They are uh, cotton and they've got either two or three strands. So you can use them three, two, one. Those would be great for chain, and sometimes I use the same thread only I start with three and then go to two and then to one and then you get a nice depth and change of weight in your thread. You tie? I mean, I know oh. how to tie stuff off, but is there a certain way to I tie, tie these it off, off? Just like I do on the bottom of a quilt. Okay. Yes. And now I'm layering them all over the top. And it doesn't have to have a pattern. Mm -hmm. But see how the, it gives it a total different mm. texture and depth. Do you, do you use the same needle? You can. You can change to a smaller if you want. Mm. It depends on what you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. But when you start layering different weights, you, you, when it starts to be filled in, it mm -hmm. just becomes... It gives it more texture. It does. Yeah. And, it, and so much more depth. Mm. Okay? Okay. That's the point. One of the best things I ever learned from Liz's thread class was to use my sewing machine threads to hand stitch with. And I always thought, oh, they're just so lightweight, they're not going to show. 
but when you layer them over with different weights, it's beautiful. And then you get all kinds of depth and texture. All right, I am going to show you how to do a knot. Not a French knot. No. Does it need to be a thick or a thin? Doesn't matter. Um, if you make knots with the, the um, machine stitching 35 weight or 50 weight, you'll just get really nice, pretty, delicate ones. But if you use the pearl cotton, you'll get bigger. Now, a French knot has three loops around the needle. I do however many loops I want, so I can't call them French knots, I was told. So that's why mine are just knots. They're Chandler knots. Chandler knots, or they're just knots, you know? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, you have this ribbon in front of you. And after I teach you the knot, I'm going to show you how to couch it with the knot. And you're going to get a great effect like this one. So you can put you can pass that around. So, of knot. Oops, I guess I need a bigger knot on the back. I, I'll have to come around you. Wrap your thread around the needle however many times you want. And I'm going to do five on this one. Put your needle back in close to where it, the thread came out. Hold your thread taut and pull it through. If you don't hold your thread taut, it's going to be a wadded mess. Okay? So I'm just going to do two wraps, and then you put it in really, so one, two, put it close to where it came out of the fabric, hold it tight. That's a, the big thing you need to do. And then when you pull it through here, hold it tight until it gets close, and then you get it off. What's right. the difference with that and the French knot? French knot has three loops. So you have this wonderful ribbon in front of you. So pick a piece that's maybe 10 inches long. All right, when, when I use the ribbon to couch, um, there are two ways to do it. You can put it through a great big needle and come up through the bottom and have a knot under there. Or you can knot the end of your um, ribbon and just leave it on top. And I kind of like that idea because it's kind of fun and it's got one more, you know, a little bit of detail there, one more element. So here I've got my ribbon. And I come up through and I'm going to make a knot. But first I come through, I will go through the ribbon to hold it down. And then I'm going to make the knot right here on the ribbon. And that's what's going to couch the ribbon down. You don't have to use just a straight stitch to couch. You can use a chain stitch, cross stitch, even a blanket stitch, anything. Any of the stitches will work for couching. So, yeah, perfect. And twist your ribbon around. Okay. And it just gives it, then you've got even more you, almost 3D. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah, it's fine. And you can make it go anywhere. Okay. The last one is a chain stitch. And the reason I want to get you started on chain stitch is because one whole chapter for the book is dedicated to chain stitch. There are so many ways to do fun things with a chain stitch. You know, we learned in what it was at Girl Scouts and stuff was the Lazy Daisy, was the first chain stitch anybody used. Um, I rarely do that. I usually use my chain stitches. Um, you can, this one right here is all chain stitch. Everything on here was done with a chain stitch. And nothing looks the same. Yeah, so pass that around. And then this is chain stitch. 
This is from the book, and it's chain stitch. Everything on here is a chain stitch. Yeah. So see this here? This is all chain stitch. Even this up here is couched with chain stitch. And all of this on the trees was done with the Valdonis. And also those rocks. These are chain too, right? Yeah, and all this appears chain. chain. This is, yeah. Um, this gray, it's what I, uh, the Valdani is what I used for the rocks. If you detach a chain stitch and you just have one st chain stitch, you can make it look like gravel, rocks, and the piece I'm passing around is. So let me get over here to a different place. I'm going to get another piece of thread. This one shows up. <laughs> Aren't they gorgeous? And isn't it fun to use the variegation because you get a change in color without having to change your threads all the time? <laughs> Do you carry Valdani? Yeah? Good, good. I haven't found anything from Valdani I don't like, which is, you know, a little bit bad sometimes. So a chain stitch. You come up right here. You're going to come up here. Here's where your needle comes out. You want to loop your fabric or your thread, and your needle has to come through that loop to catch it. Otherwise, you're just going to have a little stitch. OK. okay. So I'm coming up from the bottom. Yes, come up from the bottom. OK. You want to loop your thread around like this. And you're going to come in right here with your needle ne next to where your thread came up, but not in the same hole. And then depending on how long you, how big you want your stitch, and you make sure that this thread is looped around. Okay. Now, if you leave it loose, you're going to have a wide one. If you pull it, you're going to have a straight one. Is that, see? Now, you can go right in here and make a detached one. Like a chain. Or you can continue to make one right here and make a chain. So, as long as my thread stays up above, yeah, like see? Like, yeah, whichever way you want to do. Or you can separate them and have them detached. Like, just go underneath. Just do a, just go down yeah. here and then start somewhere else. Or you can do like this go down here mm -hmm. and come over here. Okay. Just jump over. Yeah, just jump over. Just so you attach right here. So yeah, it does have to be attached there or else right. it's just going to come out. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm.